Uh, in vitro fertilization, which is commonly known as IVF, it's a type of fertility therapy where eggs are removed from the ovaries, fertilized in the laboratory, and then embryos are transferred back into the uterus. Um, IVF has been around for over 30 years, with the first IVF uh, birth being in 1978. And it's estimated that over 3 million babies have been born from IVF procedures. And in the U.S., each year, about 1% of all births are from in vitro fertilization cycles. In vitro fertilization does have many steps, but I think once patients understand the steps, it's not as complicated as they might think. The first part is actually making sure that a patient is a good candidate for in vitro fertilization, and that involves some basic tests done by the physician before the cycle even begins. Then there's a time period where medications are used to stimulate the ovaries to make multiple eggs. We then are able to retrieve the eggs from the ovaries through a very non-invasive procedure called an egg retrieval. The eggs are then fertilized in the lab and the embryos grow in the lab for anywhere between three and five days. And at that point, we transfer a certain number of embryos, which depends on the age of the patient and the quality of the embryos back into the uterus. The best candidates for IVF tend to be patients with tubal factor infertility or severe male factor infertility, although patients who have tried other types of fertility therapy and have not had success are also candidates to consider in vitro fertilization. Uh, one thing to remember, though, is that the ovaries have to be able to make a sufficient number of eggs for in vitro fertilization to be a good and efficient therapy. And there are ways to assess this before the decision is made to proceed with IVF. The IVF process does contain many steps, and so communication between all the players of the team is very important. Um, it involves close communication between patient, physician, and often the nurse who helps coordinate the cycle. Patients need to feel very comfortable in the decision to proceed forward with IVF, and they need to really have good instructions about all the parts along the way in terms of their medication instructions and all the times that they need to be at the clinic for visits. I think that the decision to make IVF is one that needs to be made by the patient and physician together. I think it's important for patients to understand that age and equality are very important factors in terms of expectations for success. I think it is reasonable to think about completing more than one IVF cycle, but that the patient really does need to sit down with their physician and talk about the specifics of the first cycle and what may be able to be done differently to improve the chance of success. Some patients will consider anywhere between three and four total IVF attempts before sitting down with their physician and reevaluating whether this therapy is the right therapy for them. So in vitro fertilization is clearly an excellent treatment for many patients, but it's also therapy where there is some risk. And I really think that the biggest risk of IVF therapy is the risk of multiple pregnancy. The nice thing about in vitro fertilization is that we can completely control the number of embryos we transfer, and therefore we can ideally control that risk of multiple pregnancy. Most twins that do occur from IVF are because we're transferring more than one embryo. As physicians, we really try to strike the balance best in terms of picking the number that will maximize the pregnancy rate, but ideally minimize the risk of twins. And for many patients, particularly those under the age of 35, it is very reasonable to consider transferring one embryo. And in that setting, the chance of pregnancy is still excellent and the risk of twins is extremely low. Whenever I sit down with my patients to talk about IVF, I remind them that this is a type of therapy where there are many resources that are involved. There's resources of time and energy, there are emotional resources, physical resources, and the financial resources that are part of a cycle. The reality is that in the United States, many insurance companies don't cover IVF completely. Some do, some don't, and there's just a lot of variability in terms of plans. We really try to encourage patients to speak with our financial counselors so that they understand what options are available to them and some of the possibilities in terms of different ways to finance this endeavor, which, which is not small. We also have a lot of uh, other resources in our clinic, such as counselors and people who can also focus on the non-medical part, just in terms of keeping your mind and your heart uh, safe and happy when you're proceeding with this kind of therapy.